Hi, welcome to uh, lesson number two for the Mechanical Systems Unit. Uh, this lesson will focus on a Student Learning Outcome 1.1 that is investigating and describing examples of machines used in the past uh, to meet the mean needs of humans. As well, it'll cover uh, SLO uh, 1.2, which is to illustrate how some common needs, such as um, lifting devices or moving things, uh, have been met through time. So today we're going to look at how, uh, as it says here, how simple machines have been meeting needs through, uh, hum meeting human needs through history. Uh, the first one that we'll look at is obviously uh, way back when, when the uh, pyramids were being built, uh, those individuals building them, uh, although they were slaves, did have to rely on some very, very simple and very basic simple machines. Um, if you notice in here, uh, if we zoom in right here, you can see that the simple machine used here is kind of like a, a wheel and axle, right? Something to roll the block up. Uh, and if we look, uh, let's see, right over here near the top, we see these guys using something similar to, to a wedge, right? So we do see simple machines being used throughout history, some very basic ones, but people realized quite simply uh, that if you used a machine, things would get done a lot faster. Oh, there is a third one in here too. Uh, uh, pulley, if you notice way up at the top here, a very simple pulley, yet one that was very useful. Um, each machine, as it says here, was designed to meet a very specific need, whether that be lifting, pulling, or moving. Now, although the machines were different in many different ways, they all had one thing in common. They either required to be powered by animals, or in the previous picture, they were powered by people. Okay, No other sources of energy would have been available. Uh, so, when we look at uh, a simple machine that was powered by animals, uh, one very common way of using animals was to raise water from deep wells. An example of a deep water well raising machine, I guess, is something called a, a sakia or a Persian wheel. Now, the way they used to work is uh, something quite simple as this. You had a camel or an ox or a large animal attached to some sort of uh, um, arm that would turn a series of gears. Okay, you can see the series of gears uh, right here. Uh, these series of gears, or teeth matched together on wheels, was then attached to a much larger uh, uh, axle, and on the other end was a larger wheel, uh, right here. This larger wheel had uh, buckets on it, or had a rope with buckets on it, and as the larger wheel turned, um, the buckets would scoop down into the well, uh, come back up, and then dump the water into like a collection pail or something similar as shown here and then move the water down and away from the well where it could be collected. Okay, so this animal here would walk in circles all day long because he's very happy to walk in circles all day long. And of course, uh, he of course get fed and watered and stuff like that, so no need for animal cruelty or anything. But uh, these animals would simply walk in circles and their, their brute strength would would uh, turn the wheel. Um, so very, very useful in that sense. Okay, uh, Here's a quick description again of a, a sakya or a Persian wheel. A series of buckets attached to a long rope draped over a large wheel. Animals, donkeys, cows, camels, they turn the wheel that would raise the buckets of water. Okay, And the more animals obviously, the more power you get. Okay, uh, Now there's also another individual that uh, did some discovering for us in machines. His name was um, Archimedes. And the story behind Archimedes, uh, there are many, and we'll go through uh, another one later on uh, this year. But uh, Archimedes was not only a very famous uh, uh, scientist, kind of discovered uh, density and buoyancy for us, but he also uh, discovered uh, an apparatus called an Archimedes screw. Okay, And uh, although he, he did do a lot with uh, science and chemistry, he, uh, he invented a way to lift water very quickly and easily. Uh, his device essentially was a screw inside of a tube and as you turned the screw inside the tube if you placed one end in the water and turned the screw the water would travel up the screw and out the top so you could actually raise water okay and of course because he invented it he got to call it an archimedes screw now this device can move large volumes of water or other substances mostly water though very quickly in this picture here is originally powered by hand uh, nowadays, they're powered by a motor because they are getting much larger and they move much larger volumes of water, as seen here in this amusement park. Okay, you can see the Archimedes screws on either sides, okay, the left and the right, and as they turn, they move large volumes of water up to the top of this uh, tube ride. 
and then that water will snake its way back down to where it is here and it's again lifted and collected and moved back up okay so uh, these Archimedes screws very helpful for moving large volumes of water okay very large now Archimedes was only one of many very famous inventors uh, there were hundreds of different inventors throughout history but uh, hundreds of years later a famous Italian artist slash scientist slash architect slash all-around uh, intelligent smart guy Leonardo da Vinci uh, designed water lifts using actually two of Archimedes screws so he was able to lift uh, water from the ground to one tower and they would lift it from the uh, first tower to a much higher second tower uh, very inventive on da Vinci's part again using the information from Archimedes and what he knew about uh, raising water using simple machines okay uh, but da Vinci also sketched many other devices okay uh, any guesses as to what this device might have been used for uh, if you take a look there's a moat in here right here here's the moat and there's our castle wall in the background so this device any, any guesses what it might be? And yes, there is a small animal inside there if you haven't noticed it already. This device, sorry, this device was used to uh, storm castles. Okay, you, People would crawl up the, uh, the back of this thing where the stairs are. They'd tunnel their way through the tunnels and it was uh, uh, built that way so that you couldn't like sling arrows or throw rocks at people getting across. And then they'd uh, breach the castle wall. And then, uh, of course, they would uh, defeat the enemy, so to speak. This device, as I kind of preluded to already, uh, very early simple machine. Uh, we have modified versions of it now. Any ideas what it could be used for? You probably guessed it already. These are very simple screw tongs. Uh, you would clamp onto something, turn the uh, the two the the wheels over on this side here, and as you turn, the screw in the center would. Uh, cause the clamps to tighten and close and you can make a much tighter grip than uh, which you could without it. Again, all designed by da Vinci's hundreds of years ago. Uh, this one is probably one of his most famous. Uh, I don't know if you know exactly what this is or what it could be used for, uh, but it does have a uh, screw-like uh, shape on the top of it. The idea behind this is, of course, that somebody would sit uh, underneath that uh, with pedals and start pedaling, causing this top part to turn very rapidly. And this turning part uh, would then cause a person to lift, and you have the first uh, helicopter. This is the ancestor of the helicopter designed by da Vinci hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago, he was sketching uh, ways for um, people to be powered by their own, uh, their own energy. So, yeah, the, the very first helicopter right there. This one, uh, difficult to see, but uh, on the left side here, you can see that there's a man le leaning on this uh, rather large lever. Okay, and then attached to this lever looks like this giant, uh, this giant wing. Okay, so uh, any guesses what uh, what this would do or how this would work? This is a tougher one. Uh, if you were thinking something along the lines of maybe uh, the the man on the left there would move that lever up and down, and as he moved it up and down, the wing would also go up and down. This is what uh, Da Vinci called his beating wings, and he figured if you built enough of these onto a ship you could essentially uh, lift the ship out of water and you could fly the boat uh, of course you'd have to have a lot of these wings attached and a lot of guys uh, lifting it but that was his premise uh, beating wings attached to something to uh, lift a boat okay so uh, I'm going to show you one more slide and something you can think about uh, just to kind of get your brain going uh, so in the next slide there's uh, five other machines um, try and guess uh, number one what is the purpose of the machine what do you think it's supposed to do uh, two, do you think this machine could work? If we were to build it today, would it work? Yes, no? What do you think? Why or why not? Number three, what would have to power this machine if you were to build it today? What would power it? Would that be people? Would it be animals? Other? Keep in mind that Da Vinci's time, there wasn't an other. There is people and animals. So what would power this machine? And uh, four, is there a similar machine that exists today? When you look at this sketch, do you see something in there that could be something that exists today? Same uh, purpose or otherwise. Okay, So uh, here's the photos. We've got the one on the top left here. And then we have the one in the middle. Top right. Uh, again, I showed you the uh, siege machine. So you kind of have an idea what that one's for. Anything like it today, can you think? And then the last one. This is uh, This is a tougher one. 
Uh, maybe you can uh, figure it out. I'll give you a hint. Um, your gym teacher might use something very similar during uh, um, track and field. Okay, I'll give that as a hint. Okay, uh, I'll let you uh, take a look at those and uh, you can uh, try and figure out what they use for. And uh, if you have questions, just uh, let me know.